Welcome to Clemson, South Carolina. Historic Riggs Field is where we are at as the bitter rivalry in the Palmetto State is renewed yet again. South Carolina against Clemson, a top 20 matchup. Two teams that have designs on winning their conference and winning a national championship. And first and foremost, the rivalry is what matters here tonight. Alongside Gucci Anawayu, I'm Dallin Cuff. Gucci, you've played in two World Cups, but you also played here at Clemson. Explain to the folks what this rivalry means between these two schools. Well, this rivalry is larger than life. You know, I'm, you know, South Carolina has had the victory in the last three years, but this might be Clemson's year to win. We'll see if it is. Now, South Carolina, as, as Gucci alluded to, has dominated the last couple years. Clemson leads it overall, but really only matters... What have you done for me lately, Gooch? And unfortunately for some of these Clemson folks, these seniors, these players, they could leave here without ever beating their rival if they can't turn it around today. If they want to do that, Mariana Speckmeyer, second team All-ACC, will be critical at the top of that Tigers offense. But South Carolina is a stout defensive group led by Anna Patton, one of the best in the business. When you look at this matchup, what intrigues you most? This is going to be a great matchup. You know, Speckmeyer has been proven to be prolific in the last two seasons. Even this year, she's got five goals already. But Anna Patton is nothing to be played with. You know, she's been the anchor in the back line. She's coming on her senior year, and she's going to be the spine of this team and pushing forward. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun. South Carolina, sixth in the nation in terms of goals against average. We'll see if they can lock it down here on the road. We'll be back with lineups and kickoff here from a warm night in Clemson after the break. Back here to Clemson, South Carolina, getting set for the Tigers in the Gamecocks tw top 20 matchup here. And, of course, bitter rivals leading the Tigers team, Eddie Radwanski. It's 2016 ACC Coach of the Year. They won the ACC title the first time since 2000 in his ninth season right now. Here's the lineup he rolls out. We talked about Speckmeyer early on, but McKeever, the goalie, Coach, I know you're big on. Yeah, McKeever, I mean, obviously she's seen the call-ups with the, the first English national team. She's going to be a very big factor in this in this game. Obviously, Speckmeyer, I said, you know, she's been a prolific goal scorer. Mackey on the wings. You know, Clemson's going to look to really – be a ball-oriented team, keep possession, trying to attack the back line, and, you know, go at South Carolina. And for South Carolina, Shelly Smith in her 19th year. They made NCAA tournament appearances 11 in the last 12 years. Four SEC titles. Here is her lineup. As we mentioned, defensively, they are stout. Sixth in the nation, Anna Panton, Grant, Grace Fisk anchoring the back there. What else should we be focusing on here? I mean, we see the, the, the number nine change with Galassini up top, but, you know, obviously, the upperclassmen are really thick in the back line. They have Five juniors, they got four seniors uh, anchoring the back line. So right now I'm really hoping that this is going to be a very defensive team and very uh, well organized. That's what Shelly Smith's club has always been, very well organized. The official in the middle, Megan Mullen, blows the whistle. We are underway with the Palmetto City State rivalry here between South Carolina and Clemson. Alexa Barr battling Renee Gano for that ball in the air. Early on in the game, you see Clemson pressing high, putting pressure on the back line. Claire Griffith sprays it out wide to Ryan Garys. She turns and goes into space. Little one-two combination played by Galassini. Early ball played in. Bars back there, but cleared out. Nice play defensively by Guillaume. And an early corner for the Gamecocks. Yeah, South Carolina is not going to back down in this game. Obviously, this is a this is a bragging rights game, you know, and they're going to go at it both sides. You see the high tempo and the intensity early on in the game in the first minute, so I'm expecting this to go all 90 minutes. Lauren Chang sets up for the corner. Was the goal scorer last year in this rivalry. One nil win for South Carolina. Cleared off the line. Sets up nicely. Griffiths puts it back into the mixer, but eventually popped out. Battling on the far side. Good turn. Played out, though. Still Gamecocks ball. It's Jaleesa Harris on the ball. Harris, SEC All-Freshman team last year, 33 in red. With Galassini again. She plays it off. Second corner. Not even two minutes in. South Carolina is putting the pressure on early. You know, they're playing away. They're making a statement. They've actually won the last three games, so I know they're hoping to make this the fourth in a row. You feel pretty good to be a senior and go out and never lose to Clemson. That'd be unbelievable in terms of the rivalry. <laughs> Unheard of, actually. Played in short. Skips falls. Hard 
Adesanya's turned around. Circle back out. Reset. Or oh, Trang pressured. Doesn't turn it over. Shields it enough. Griffiths back on the ball. Her head's up. She drives it. Some handball contact, but said there was a foul first by Megan Mullen, our center official. Speaking to Coach Smith before this game, she said, you know, they understand that this is a rivalry, but they don't want to get over emotional. They want to take this game on like the last six. You know, they've been playing really well, obviously 6-0, and they're going to try and approach this game the exact same way that they have all season. Hey, okay, you say that. How, uh, you, can you really do that as a player? Can you act like this is the same old game? Like I said, that's what the coach said. <laughs> oh, I'm asking you, what would you, what would you think? Uh, what, if you're out there in the field, you really can't feel the same as like an average game, though. The adrenaline that the players feel is it's a lot different than the coaches feel, obviously, but, you know, they're going to try and put the game plan that the coach wants as best as possible and, you know, play their game for 90 minutes as much as they can. See if they can do that. Band is here. They've got the Vuvuzelas going, taking us back to South Africa. Federations Cup you played in, the South Africa World Cup of 2010. You were down there in that? I thought those were banned. They were banned, uh, I believe, FIFA, but this is they don't have any jurisdiction here. <laughs> Danny Antonio scoops it up in the back and looks at... A little transition. She's got her head up, tries to play the ball in early, does just that. Oh, ball spilled. It's loose. And there was a foul on the keeper, Michaela Krasowski, outstanding keeper. She's taking a look at this ball played in, the contact. Clemson trying to get in there, play the long balls, trying to test the goalkeeper. I don't know if that's much of a foul as it was a spill. Megan Mullen seems very... Uh, Polite to the keepers today. I think so. I, I don't know about that call. We might want to take the VAR on that one. <laughs> VAR is in effect here in tonight's match, but only for goal or no goal to the ball across the line, mistaken identity with disciplinary matters, and fighting. So unfortunately for that, there will be no VAR controversy. Fair enough. I think we got enough of that in the world. The league's <laughs> all over the world. Another quick foul, as expected, a little bit in a rivalry match. Love to see the statistics of the fouls after the game to see how much of a rivalry this is going to be. Oh, we will we'll keep you updated, my friend. <laughs> I will keep you abreast of the situation. It's 2 2 right now. Back when I was playing at this point, it had already been double digits. <laughs> <laughs> Yellows quickly out. That's it. That's ball played in. I'll come back to that in a second. Warren Chang gets ahead to it. SQ on it. Popped out wide, crossing chance. Nope, offside, flag is up. I'm expecting the first 15 minutes of this game to be really back and forth until it settles down. You know, obviously they're playing with a little bit of nerves, especially Clemson with six under underclassmen starting this game. So, you know, after 15 minutes, I think they're going to settle the game down and it's going to have more of a, a pace. To that point, you were talking about fouls before with the officiating. How difficult, if you're an official, do you want to come out there and, and blow the whistle real quick in a game like this? Maybe give a card to set a tone to keep it chill, if you will? I mean, it's the official's job to manage the game. Mm -hmm. You don't, you want to let them play, but you don't want to let it get too dirty where, you know, you see red cards, you see wild tackles and fouls coming up, and potentially somebody getting injured. So mm -hmm. the uh, the referee has to use their jurisdiction and use their, their better judgment in, in making the calls. Grace Fisk and Anna Patton, two English youth players, but Patton was just called to the senior team, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, called up for the Norway and Belgium series of games. She did not play, but came back and showed out in Purdue and DePaul. They played the little Boilermaker Challenge. She was the defensive MVP in that. Ball played up. Could be an opportunity. Through. Settled. Shot taken. Saved, though, by Sandy McGeever, who was the other person called up, along with Patton, to go to the English national team senior camp. They roomed together. Veteran goalkeeper, prolific goal, goalkeeper, obviously got called up to the first team, but she's going to be tested right now. You see uh, the striker, Galassini, testing her right there, getting in behind the defense, and uh, Clemson's going to have their hands full this, this evening. Yeah, McKeever's played in the U-20 World Cup. They were a bronze medal winning team. U-17 World Cup as well, the Euros, Man City Academy product. She's, she's done quite a bit in her career. And doing more I believe she got the golden glove in that tournament. Yes, quite a, quite a talented young keeper. Ball played early, and this is going to be onside. Out comes Krasowski in time to scoop it up, though, alleviate any pressure. 
Courtney Jones is going to be a, a handful on that right side. Courtney Jones, the one change from Eddie Redwanski's club that won last week. Their game against Georgia, 2-1. Jones gets the start, though. We should mention, it is a warm day today. We'll see how much uh, substitutions are used judiciously in this game. Yeah, we might see a water break even. It's potential. We are going to have a hydration break, I was just told, so that was confirmed right before kickoff. We'll explain that when it gets there, but around the 30-minute mark, we will have a three-minute break. Long ball played by Jackson Moeller. Looking for Mariana Speckmeyer. Played out safely by Tatum Malazzo. Clemson's going to have to uh, want Conti to get on the board, ball more if they want to control this midfield. You know, right now it's been all South Carolina. They've been controlling the pace, and Clemson's got one or two occasions. But, you know, if they really want to control this pace on their home field, they got to get their midfielders on the ball. Got one of them now on the ball. Well, left back, Rhea Guillaume, but she's first in the nation in assists. Seven of them. She likes to get on the ball and create. Al Hirschfeld, freshman out there, number 15 in white, getting a little time. That's a great statistic that your left back is number one in the nation. Pretty wild. In assists. They're playing a very attack-minded brand of football, Clemson. Geared up for a long throw here. Into the box. Mackin on it. Tried to cross over. Falls out for Guillaume. That's where she wants to be. Dangerous ball whipped in. South Carolina able to battle and get it away. Uh-oh, this might be left short. No, it's okay. McEver's out there to get it. Standard operations. <laughs> Poor ball played back. Turned over to the Tigers. Moeller with the quick restart. Ball to Jones. Got her head up, driven ball in. Ball by Run, run by Mackin. Couldn't quite get good purchase on it. And that's the early delivery that they need to get in behind the South Carolina defense. You know, they are a strong defense, but they're not impenetrable. That was a great ball by Speckmeyer and, and Mackin trying to get behind it. They need to see more of that. Sarah Eskew almost fell asleep at the back. Back post there, Julie Mackin slipped in, got the shot off, a little contact in the middle, no call. Clemson needs to move the ball a lot quicker, make South Carolina make decisions on the ball or off the ball. We see Jones getting involved a lot here. No call, though, by Megan Mullen. This may lead to an opportunity in transition. Warren Chang's heads up, looking cross field for Barr. Cut out by Guillaume. Good tracking back. Now we're going quickly the other way. It's a Mackin good ball. Horse. Great ball. Early ball oh. played there by Mackin. Not the right choice. I mean, that, that's the right choice, just uh, wrong ex execution. Mackin they're, gets they're, it back. I think they're settling down more into their system. Clemson, they're getting more control of the ball. Eliminating simple mistakes. But obviously trying to go over the top. They see, they see where they can expose South Carolina right now on the wings and over the top of the defenders. Early ball in. Speckmeyer. Tried for the sidekick, didn't get it to work. South Carolina handled the pressure there for a few passes as well, but almost turned it over, They're still on it. You see Clemson applying a lot of pressure now. They weren't doing that in the opening minutes of the game, but they might have seen a weakness that they're going to try to expose now to the South Carolina defense. And Speckmeyer picks it up with an opportunity. Take a look at this chance, though, by Mackin as she came into the back post. Yeah, you see Speckmeyer sees her early, tries to get the cross in. Mackin tries to sneak in in front, but she doesn't connect well enough. It's a good, good opportunity to get a goal. Again, this South Carolina team, sixth in the nation in goals against average. 0.2 goals a game they're giving up right now. Another long throw, though. This is something Clemson will employ repeatedly. Flicked on wow. by Patton. 
Falls out. Good shot attempt by Moeller. She might take another crack at it. It falls up over the net. And Krasowski is incredulous at her defense. They're putting the pressure on Clemson on, on South Carolina right now. Clemson is really exposing weaknesses and disorganization in, in the back line of South Carolina. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a goal would fall in the next coming minutes. Are you surprised at all to see how disorganized uh, South Carolina has been given their pedigree? I mean, this is a rivalry. Yeah. So all, all statistics, all, all formulas go out the window when, when you're playing something like this. But I'm hoping that South Carolina can, can settle down, play their brand of football that they've been doing all season, and, and make this a good game. Hirschfeld turns, knocks it upfield to Moeller. Her early ball played into Jones, who's running it down. They've got runners in the box, but she couldn't get there in time. Courtney Jones, redshirt sophomore there. Getting in the mix here, missed most of 17, 2017. Injuries, seventh game of the year, sixth start. As you mentioned, you want to see her more involved in trying to play down that right side to her. I think they see something in her in attacking that, that far right side. That might be the weak link on South Carolina's defense, and she's been able to get in behind a couple times, uh, whether it be her or Speckmeyer on the early cross that we saw a couple minutes ago. But I wouldn't be surprised if Clemson attacks a lot on the right side of the field. Ryan Garys offside, and you see Kayla Krasowski is in a little bit of pain after that goal kick. We'll keep an eye on that, see if that affects her. Take a look. Grabs it at her leg. Now that's not a good sign to see early on in the game. Jones goes down, wants a foul, no call. Referee's been letting play go. Yeah, that's true. She's saying this is not basketball. This is a contact sport. <laughs> it took you, what, about 15 minutes to get shot in about hoops? Well done. Thought it would be the first five. No flopping here. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, there is no flopping here. Now, the men over in Europe could learn a little something from the women playing in the States. Hear no evil, see no evil. <laughs> Now we bring in Clemson coach Eddie Radwanski. Coach, thank you for taking the time in game here. What's your assessment of, the, of your team's uh, performance the first 15 minutes here? Well, a good start. Uh, pleased that we're being a little brave on the ball in the final third. Uh, you know, South Carolina is a difficult team to break down, so we wanted to at least come out and be a threat. And uh, we're getting some opportunities. And uh, against a team like this, you know, you got to look to take them. But I mean, to begin with, uh, a, a good start for us so far. Coach, what do you see with Courtney Jones? We see a lot of attack on the right side. Do you, do you think that she's going to be able to take advantage of the South Carolina defense on that side? Well, we hope so because, you know, obviously Courtney is a girl with a lot of pace and quickness, and uh, she's very, very effective for us, not just with the ball but without the ball. She's a tenacious defender. So we feel like we've got a little bit of pace up front that can maybe cause them some issues, and, uh, you know, that's part of our game plan is to try to do that, to get, you know, cause them a problem and make them deal with us and try to take them a little bit out of their rhythm. Yeah, we see a lot of the back and forth early on in the game, and I think that now it's, it's starting to settle down and teams are getting the nerves out of themselves and playing to the game plan. What do you what do you see with Speckmeyer right now? Well, hopefully she just won a corner. <laughs> 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 now, I mean, we want Mariana and all our players like Courtney and Julie to, to engage and go 1v1 when it's on and to play with bravery and courage. And, uh, you know, opening minutes we've been able to do it. It'd be nice to get one. Uh, but we know this is going to be a good game. And uh, But, you know, from the start of the game, pleased with our team's performance so far. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate your time. You're very welcome. Coach Eddie Redwanski joining us in-game here about the 30-minute mark. We are now 16 minutes into the game, 29 minutes left as Rene Guillon, first in the nation in assists, the left back for the Tigers. He's got seven helpers on the year, sets up to put it in. Floated ball toward the penalty spot, headed down and out for a goal kick. Clemson's very dangerous on set pieces. We know that. And Guillaume delivers a great ball, puts it in the air, gives your players a chance to get up there and battle with the South Carolina defense. That was something Shelly Smith told us earlier in the week, too. She said, I'm worried about set pieces. We gave one up to Notre Dame. North Carolina, I mean, be, South Carolina just beat Notre Dame last week, two, two, two days ago, 2-1. But they did give up that goal late in the game on a set piece. They didn't take care of it. She was concerned about the set pieces for the Tigers. But now the Tigers are concerned is could be a counter coming the other way. Carolina's got runners in the box. Driven ball. Bars there. Header. Just couldn't keep it down. And that's why I love this sport. Back and forth. You, see, you saw Mackenzie Smith get on that 
ball off the header, and then just on the other side of the field, South Carolina exposes the defense and gets an early opportunity. We've got our first sub of the match. Coming in quickly. Luciana Zulo came in for Bianca Galassini. As we mentioned, Galassini getting the start up top, but there, Iguchi, you, you alluded to it in the beginning of the show. They're, they're searching for something with a number nine spot with, with a consistent performer in that role. Yeah, they, they've been switching off and on. Obviously, you saw now in the, in the su early substitution. I think South Carolina, they're defensively organized and structured, and they're just looking to, to complement that on the attack. Early ball played in. Kiever eventually comes out to scoop it up. With a little luck, this game is already 2-2. <laughs> hey, it, it could happen here fast. We're in the 27th minute remaining in the first half here from historic Riggs Field alongside of Gucci Anuayu. I'm Dallin Cuff. Gucci spent two years at Clemson as a player, knows this rivalry well. Alexa Barr just didn't even go because she knew she was offsides. Offside, pardon. I will say back in my day it wasn't much of a rivalry, but uh, <laughs> I, I think Clemson had the better of the, uh, the games. Not so much in the series right now, but, you know, it was a different sport back then. I'm not going to allude to how long ago and <laughs> give my age away, but it was a while. I'm pretty sure most soccer fans watching could take a guess at how old you were. 25? Exactly, yeah. They're like, man, he played in the World Cup at 12? That's awesome. <laughs> Good for him. He played with my grandfather. <laughs> Scooped up by Guillaume, sent deep. Zowski looking to pick out Chang. Balls for Alexa Barr. She knocks it wide for Gary East, but she's offside again. Offside ball again. And in case you folks don't know, you can do the math on your own. My man doesn't want to say what year it was, but <laughs> 2001 ACC semifinal game winning goal at the UNC won the championship. What was our fashion deal back then in all sports? Just yeah, gear we, was really big. I mean, we were wearing triple X. That was that was <laughs> standard. That was the thing. You know, I was a lot bigger than I look, but we were wearing, you know, 4T. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> like football players or basketball players, but, uh, yeah, it was a <laughs> fashion was different back then. Way different. Gooch successful career over in Europe, almost 15 years over there? 15 years in Europe, yeah. 15 years in Europe, two World Cups, 06, 2010, Federations Cup 2009, getting the final against Brazil. Me and Charlie were reliving your guys' win over Spain the other day oh, wow. on air. I still talk trash to a lot of Spanish players about that. <laughs> I think you earned it. Snap their unbeaten run. They hadn't lost a game in two years. They were reigning European champions. They're having nightmares about Charlie and Josie for a while. I think so. They were a heck of a win. Offside by Speckmeyer. Chang knocks it over. Eskew. We've seen a little bit of Speckmeyer and a lot of Jones. I want to see more of Conte on the ball. You know, she's a very good number 10 in the midfield. She's, she's, a, she's a freshman, obviously, but she's, she's very instrumental in this attack, and I want to see her get on the ball and deliver more, more crucial passes. Yeah, 23 white Caroline Conte freshman, as you mentioned. She's a two-time 5A player of the year here in South Carolina. Great, great career, and Coach Eddie told us earlier, you know, she's going to Composed, great star. Says she has an absolutely bright future. You can see it already. She's carved out a spot in the midfield here in this team as a freshman in a top 20 program. You know, she just has to make her stamp on this game and mm -hmm. see how that goes. Barr trying to chase it down. McKeever will get out there. Barr was the difference maker two years ago in this game when Clemson and South Carolina are both the top 10 matchup. We'd never seen that before. Clemson was number four, South Carolina number seven. Not seen that in this rivalry. And Barr scored the only goal in the game, 17th minute. That's number 10 red for the 1-0 no win. I know they're going to try and prevent her from doing that again. Yep. Both sides have had their chances to get on the score sheet right now. You, know, you, see, you see Courtney Jones turn her defender. Great job by Jones. Get an opportunity. Space. We've got runners in the box. Play back towards Speckmeyer, but Grace Fisk, veteran, cool under pressure. Red it the whole way. As I said before, I think they're going to try and expose that left side of South Carolina's defense. I think... At, at the moment, Courtney Jones has her number. She's got the better of her thus far, and she's, she's, she's making passes. She's beating tackles. She's running past players. 
They're going to have a handful with her right now. Yeah, sophomore's been redshirt. Sophomore's been very good so far. Fourth offside of the game for the Gamecocks. Trying to get in behind, behind the lines, but not quite timing their runs properly. Luciano Zulo, only sub of the match. She came on for Galassini earlier, but Zulo moves out to the wide spot, pushes bar number 10 back into the number nine role within this group. Sydney Dawson plays it out to touch. talked about earlier the back and forth you know for the five minutes ago it was all Clemson right now they're pushing deep in Clemson's defensive end and South Carolina are applying pressure see if Clemson can get out of this both teams undefeated South Carolina perfect record six games six wins Clemson 5-0 and won their one draw against Oregon here at historic Riggs Field five wins other than that both teams only allowing two goals in the, in the first six games. That's, that's unbelievable, actually. It's been both teams' very impressive start to the season. They're about to start ACC play, the Tigers are, but have handled their business as Mariano Speckmeyer gets on the ball. Let's take a look at their summary of shots. They're out shooting their opponents, controlling the game. Speckmeyer leading this team in goals, dancing right now with the ball, trying to get a cross off. Gets room. There was an arm in the air. No appeals for handball. And offside with Caroline Conti. I think they see how dangerous Speckmeyer is. As soon as she has the ball, you see multiple players try and cover around her and prevent her from doing anything, getting passes or shots across. And she's going to be covered heavily this whole game. For sure. They're, they're trying to replace Miranda Westlake, too, as well. Second on the team in goals last year. She had nine. She was third team All-ACC. Also, Sam Staub was the ACC defensive player in the year on the other side of the ball. She was drafted fourth overall by the Washington Spirit. Sam's had a good rookie campaign for them, 15 appearances, and a team that's started really well. Rose Lavelle and Mallory Pugh right before they went for their break, and that team has struggled post-World Cup. Couple more subs coming your way here. Malia Morris, freshman, 21, enters the fray. Morris is another freshman, just like Conti. You know, she's she's been a very big part of this offense in the early parts of the season. Uh, Coach Redwanski had spoken heavily up on her. She's from Maryland. And she's she's going to be a, a handful as well for the for the South Carolina back line. Let's see if she can get into the game a little bit. Yeah, she was a Gatorade Player of the Year in the D.C. area. Morris was. On the other side of the ball, Riley Tanner enters the game for Ryan Garis, who's had some, actually for Alexa Barr, excuse me. Sophomore from Michigan. You know Malia Morris has to be a quality player when she's from Maryland. No oh, bias. Man, there's, <laughs> you're by, you didn't need to say it. I think we all knew what was going on. We're like, what are the odds Gucci's from Maryland? <laughs> About 21 minutes in here, 26 minutes in, excuse me. Alongside Gucci on away, I'm Dallin Cuff. Here with the Palmetto State rivalry, and we've got a loose boot right now. Uh, who needs them to play? You don't need your shoes. <laughs> foul called, a chance for South Carolina to send one in. It's the fifth foul now on the Tigers of the game. Whenever I see players lose their shoes in a game, I always wonder how loose do you actually tie them for them to fly off like that? I've played some dudes in hoops where I wondered if their shoes were even tied. Really? And I look down, I'm like, how does that stay on your foot? There's Coach Shelly Smith, 19th season here for South Carolina. Been to the tournament 11 in the last 12 years, built quite a powerhouse. They've been in the top 25 the last 40 weeks. Wow. That's impressive. I mean, she's she's been there so long. She's 
constructed this program to make it what what they are, what she wants it to be. Obviously, they're well organized. They're almost like a, a machine in a sense. You know, obviously they're number seven ranked in the country. You know, and they're they're forced to be to be felt on this field right now. Okay. And flag stays down. Chance for play it in, driven in, out for a corner now. Third corner of the game for South Carolina. You see Antonio mad at the official for not the offside call, but you're you're taught early on in your days you don't play your hand up. You keep, keep hooping. On, play into the whistle. Keep on running back. Play into the whistle. Got two subs coming in here. Samantha Chang is joining the fray for Lauren Chang, no relation. And number seven, Paige McCula, comes in the game for SQ. Yeah, Coach Smith is going to try and influx some, some energy into this for the final 17 minutes of the, of the half and try and get behind the, the Clemson back line and get on the score sheet. They've had a couple of opportunities, but right now it's, uh, it's quite an even game back and forth. With hesitation by Jones. Beats one defender. She's got a chance to get by McCullough, who's just come in the game. Fresh legs wins out. Early ball played. McKeever's off her line, wise to it. You see Morris getting in behind right there. You know, her speed and her technical ability can put dangers on any defense. I think they got to keep an eye out on her. Keown, poor first touch, lost control of the ball, and ended up just knocking it down. Foul from behind, yes it is. Picked up by Mackenzie Smith. Smith, the senior defender. Tanner was one of the subs in the match, as we talked about earlier. Early ball played in here. But marshaled out for a goal kick. We'll have a few more subs coming your way. Again, a warm day here in Clemson. Call me crazy, but it doesn't feel like a rivalry game just yet. Not, 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 not people getting stuck in yet? There's not enough getting stuck in. There's not enough fouls. I don't want to see a dirty match. I was about to say, what are we, what are we asking for I here? See, I want to see an aggressive match. I want to see the, the passion on the player's face every time they go into a duel. Harper White's trying to get in a duel. Freshman two-time All-State in Tennessee. Four just joined the mix, as well as Kimber Haley, the junior. 2017, she was the Tiger Newcomer of the Year. Yeah, how, how, how physical was it when you played? Was it, were guys just coming in, fly, tackles flying right away? I mean, if there was no blood, there's no foul. Now we're talking about a hoops thing. That, that's how, <laughs> I don't know if that works on the pitch. You're talking about hoops back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, that's right, they weeded that out. <laughs> Those days are done. Good turn. Kyle bumped off the ball, but they maintained possession. Good play combination by South Carolina. Keeping possession, moving the ball. Nice move by McCula. Dance around a defender. That's going to be a key to expose this Clemson back line is, is movement. <laughs> Megan Mullen trying to just gain control, back this thing up. but she doesn't seem to get to it in time. More subs coming in here. Cameron Dixon now in the game for Ryan Garris. 
Dixon started the last match, but she made way for Galassini at the start of this game. Coach Schmidt seems to be using this alternating players to keep him fresh. Searching ball for Riley. Chang ends up with it. Samantha, that is. Dixon just enters the game. We'll get a shot off. McKeever gets her body behind it. Simple save. She worked her space. She got a little bit of room, and then she took a shot off. Obviously, McKeever, that was an easy pickup for her. You have to hit a lot cleaner than that to beat this goalie. Again, Sandy McKeever, the senior. Third team all ACC last year. Coach Radwanski said she's huge for us, a big presence in goal. She missed three games that call up to the English senior team. Player is down, but play on right now. Speckmeyer out to Jones. Back to, oh, poor pass. Speckmeyer had some room, wanted to take a shot. Kenzie Smith slow to get up for the Tigers, kind of jogging. Early ball played in. Speckmeyer trying to get on the back, but that's too easy for Krasowski. And now Mullen will check on Smith, who's struggling. We spoke about McKeever when she missed her three games with international duties, but they have the freshman, uh, what's her name, uh, Hannah McClellan, who had three shutouts, you know, player of the week, ACC player of the week. You know, so they have two really good goalkeeper options on Clemson's side right now. Definitely have some good options now. Mackenzie Smith has to get looked at here because Megan Mullen Officials saying that it was potentially a head injury when she went down. So she has to be cleared again to stay on the field. If you take a look here. Too so much head to head contact. You see her nep snack back. She was very slow getting up, the senior from New York. Concussions are a big part of the game nowadays, and nobody wants to take any kind of risks with that kind of injury. And and I'm all for the protocols that they have because there have been so many instances in, in careers where people don't acknowledge it and don't take, take care of it and it ends up being a bigger problem later on. 100% agree. Players get frustrated at times, but it is for their own benefit. It's the right thing to do. Hopefully Smith is okay. She's still holding her neck, but it seems like she's just waiting for the fourth official to allow her to come back into the game as soon as this ball is put in play. Or maybe not. They're going to substitute her, actually. Take a look at this. See your back bow, neck snap back. You never want to see that. Lauren Bruns comes in for the freshman from Virginia, two-time All-State player in UVA. Not at UVA, excuse me. In the state of Virginia. Let's not confuse let's, things let's here. Let's not make that confusion right now. <laughs> and the ball was trying to be marshaled out, but Riley Tanner stayed on it, almost came away with it. Clemson's got to be careful right now. South Carolina, they're pushing, they're pressing. It's the final 10, 11 minutes of the half. You want to go into this second half with a clean sheet. Ball played in. It's a good ball, but too close to McGeever, and honestly, just out of bounds. So we're wrapping up the weekend here in the women's soccer world. A couple big results. If you don't know, now you know. North Carolina, number one team in the nation, previously unbeaten, goes to Fayetteville, loses. 2-0 to an unranked Arkansas team. That was a bit of a shocker. Virginia getting a win against Penn State. Florida State had a great win against Colorado, 3-2 in overtime on Friday or Thursday, excuse me, and they come away with another win for a weekend to help them recover from what was a tough start to the season for the number one team in the nation. They lost to USC and UCLA out in the road a couple weeks ago, but it bounced back. Nicely settled down by Samantha Chang, played forward. Runners in the box. Claire Griffiths making the back post run. Cut back early, though, and Zulo, nothing she could do to get there. Quick transition, Malaya Morris. You see the speed of Morris. Now she's going to take on her player one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see if she can get around her. She gets a little bit of the edge, gets the ball played into a dangerous area. There's Jones on it. She lays it off. Shot. Great save by Krasowski. 
great save from Krasowski. Lauren Bruns, newly into the match, gives it a ride. All started from freshman Malaya Morris, taking her player one-on-one, -on -one, getting that early cross off in the volley. Heck of a save right there. That ball's dipping, swerving away from her. And that's why she's the anchor in the defense. They can always rely on her to come up with these big saves so many times in the game. And right there, she just kept her kept her clean sheet going into the first, second half. She knows something about that. She's the all-time record at South Carolina with clean sheets and goals against average. 24 clean sheets, six goals against average. It's just under .6. Outstanding keeper the senior is and just shows you why right there. Unbelievable. There's been a number of U.S. Youth National Team camps. May see her wearing the red, white, and blue down the road. Cameron Dixon battling with Dawson. Ball played back hot. Giever easily handles it, though. I like how this first half has really gone. Both sides have had their opportunities to get on the score sheet. Both goalies have come up big time one or another time. You know, the midfield, I, I think, has not been a big part of this. The center of the midfield, rather, has not been a big part of this game. I know the outside mids in, in Morris and in Courtney Jones have, have tried to take advantage of their opportunities as much as they can. But here you go, South Carolina on the attack. Emron Dixon lays it to Samantha Chang, and she's off early. It didn't matter. McKeever off the line. Take a look. Is this the right decision, or should Dixon maybe have pushed it herself a little bit more? She was offside. By a mile. Right there, she's offside by a mile. She took off a little too early. You know, obviously she wanted to make that pass because she, she saw the defense closing in on her, but her teammate was a step too, too early. It's now the fifth offside here by South Carolina, and that was a big one because that seemed like an opportunity was about to fall to them. Speckmeyer with the flick on. Burns trying to run it down. Bruns, excuse me. Ball played in, deflection. Out, says it rolled out over the touchline before the cross was played. Another sub coming in here. Sutton Jones, sophomore defender, comes in for Claire Griffiths. Jones will play in the midfield, though, a very versatile player. Let's see what team can have the final push in this first half and end it on the right note. You definitely do not want to give up a goal in the final six minutes of the half. You want to go into the second half with momentum, with a clean sheet, with an opportunity to get ahead as soon as the second half starts. Well, Bruns almost put her team ahead. We'll see if there can be another opportunity as good as that, but Krasowski was equal to the task with a fantastic save. Renee Guillaume, the long throw. And, and it does lead to a corner. It's poorly handled in the back. Very uncharacteristic of South Carolina right there. Gianna Zullo. A little bit of a mistake and could lead to an opportunity here. Renee Guillon, again, first in the nation in assists, has been very quiet in this game. Not many balls played in. That was an important part of Shelly Smith's game plan to limit her service, but now you can't limit this. Floated ball towards the back line, and Krasowski able to corral it. She smothers that. Too easy for her. All played early. Runs on it. Turn over in a bad spot there. There's Lisa Harris on the ball. And you mentioned how the center mids have not been that involved. We've only said Harris's name a few times. Conti, who's on the ball there. Caroline Conti, who I know you wanted to get more of the rock. 
Yeah, I really want to see her more on the ball. You know, in the past games, she's been very instrumental into the offense. You know, right now you see all the attack going on the sides. There's nothing going down the middle for Clemson. Here in the beginning of the show, outstanding defensive defense woman out of England, Arsenal youth product, played in the FA Cup youth cup. I know you like that one. Hey, gotta love Arsenal. Unfortunately, when you're up two nil, 60th minute on the road, you got to find a way to batten down the hatches. Can't let Watford, who's last in the league, draw you. I segue to the, the men's game today, but anyway, you know, my bad. I'm still sore. Still a little sore. Between that and the Steelers, it was a rough day for the kid. Oh, wow. Just let people know it's up. I'll hold it against you. You should. MacEver trots out here, under four minutes to go in the first half. Here's Mackenzie Smith getting set to come back in. Now, usually you can't re enter in the first half, but when you have a head, potential head injury that has to be cleared, or any injury of that nature caused by a foul, you can re enter in the first half. So she's coming back in the game. See who will make way this time. She's yelling out instructions. There's both Mariana Speckmeyer and Courtney Jones running to her. So Speckmeyer's actually going to come off. Jones looks like she's going to play more centrally. 23, Caroline Conti now goes over to your... Oh, no, Conti's coming centrally now with Jones on the right side as the Eddie Radwanski shuffles things around. Not sure he's getting what he wants. He looks a little confused. <laughs> Like, what is it? Wait, wait, what I think you're doing? taking Speckmeyer out right now. Give her a little rest. She's going to come back on in the second half, a little more re-energized. He's just going to shift things around. They see that Courtney Jones and Malaya Morris has been having a lot of success on this back line for South Carolina. And just going to try and switch things around and see what we can do for the final two and a half minutes of the game. Jones run out of real estate, ran into Bruns, a teammate. I think she got tackled by her own teammate right there. More friendly fire. Keown looks to play it down the channel early to Morris, and she's going to get on it. Defended by McEula. Good cut back by Jones. She's got some space here. Drives it, and it's in the back of the net! What a finish by the freshman! Wow. The second goal of her career in a Tigers uniform, and it couldn't come at a bigger time against her rival in the dying embers of the first half. This freshman is special. I'm not going to mention that she's from Maryland, but what a strike. You know, she, as soon as she's come on this field from a substitution, look at that strike. You know, she takes her player on consistently. She's a threat. She's been a threat since she came into the game. Takes the right back on. Puts it in the top corner. You couldn't walk over there and place it much better than that. I don't think you could. And Krasowski's not going to get to it. Great look from behind at the goal cam there. This this freshman has been a spark in this game, but it has been a spark for the whole season for Clemson. And right there, she's been showing her worth on this team. Coach Radwanski told us earlier this week, she has that knack to create stuff for herself or her teammates. But well, we just saw it right there. Well, this is what you want going into the second half. Like I said, the one thing you don't want to do is go down a goal or concede a goal. And as long as Clemson can keep this clean sheet for the next minute and a half, you know, they got themselves in good position. South Carolina is going to have to find a way to respond to this. You're playing away. You're playing against a good offensive team. You're going to have to find ways to get some offensive threat against the Clemson defense. Yeah, Clemson has not been threatened as much. This game has definitely been played more in South Carolina's half. They lead in shots 6-4. They lead the possession battle as well. South Carolina started the game off with an early spark. You know, they were they were pressing high, they were having their opportunities, but as the game went by, I think Clemson took more control of it. Coach Radwanski switched some players around, made some substitutions, 
Um, and I think the, the substitutions and the changes have been the difference in this game. Ball played early again. mcgeever has been off her line quickly. To handle this little sweeper keeper action. She's good with her feet. She can scoop it up there as well. They're just going to see this half off now, the final 20 seconds. Clemson's going to be happy with this first half performance and especially with the score line going into the second half. Stealing some momentum into break. If they didn't have enough already playing at home with control of the game, they got the gold they coveted. And that is the score at the break. The freshman, Malia Morris, makes the difference with a great individual effort. Beats the senior keeper, Sandy McIver, again. Clemson has not won in this rivalry since 2015. The seniors on this team want to walk out of here with one win over the rival. This may be the difference. Last two meetings, it only took one goal. One nil wins. Will Morris's goal be the difference? We'll find out. The next 45 coming up in a few. We'll be back from Historic Riggs Field in a minute. In UVA, we got another good rivalry game going here without a now. Palmetto State. There's the Palmetto Series now. So every one of these games counts as a point, and every sport these teams play add up at the end of the year, you get the Palmetto Cup. Last couple of years, South Carolina has taken home that point since 2015. The inception of the Palmetto Cup actually was that year. Clemson trying to right the ship here. They hold the all-time lead in this series, 13, 11, and 1. But as we mentioned earlier, the seniors for the Tigers have never beat the Gamecocks. So right now, they want to hold on to that scoreline to flip the script. We'll see if they can do that. What do you think is being talked about in the locker room with, this, with these teams right now? Well, right now, I know that. Coach Radwanski is probably telling them to continue the momentum. You know, they finished the, the first half very strong, but they, he wants them to not let off the gas pedal, to continue pressing the South Carolina back line, you know, and just keep the game plan. Coach Smith, I'm sure she's telling, telling them to, to tighten it up and to get more possession and to put more, put more pressure toward the Clemson back line, which they haven't done for the first 45 minutes. You know what? I think we should just ask Coach Smith what she thinks about this whole thing. Let's do it. She's been here for 19 years with this program. As mentioned, led them to wins in this series the last three years. Knows what it means to them to get a win in this series. And let's bring her in now. Coach Smith, uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. What was your message to your team at halftime down, down a goal here? Well, you know, that was unfortunate. We gave up a goal late in that half. Um, we didn't do uh, some things we talked about we had done early in the game. Um, so that was, uh, we didn't cover like we should have. So it was a mistake. Um, proud of what the team did most of that. We uh, have a few changes we need to do. Um, we have to be a little bit more dangerous. Uh, play a little bit quicker. We can expose some things and, um, uh, and uh, take advantage of some opportunities we've had to be better in front of the goal. As you said in the first 15 minutes, you guys are really pressing the Clemson back line and you seem to kind of die down towards the end of the game. Did you want to have more offense down the middle. You want to get your wingers more involved in this game. How do you think it's going to turn it around for the second half? Well, I think, uh, you know, we got to continue working. Uh, we put some substitutes in, and they got to continue to keep up the pace of the game. And, um, I mean, we're trying to keep our legs fresh and uh, continue to work. And we, we do want to put them under pressure and not give them that long ball, especially in the channels. they got some pace and um, something we have to limit. So we're, uh, we're, we're trying to get back to where we started today. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate your time in game. All right, thank you. And we're back underway here. Courtney Jones plays up to Lauren Brun Bruns. She's getting a start here in the second half. Clemson starting the second half the same way that they ended the first on the offense. You know, they're taking it to South Carolina right now, you know, trying to press high and keep that momentum that they ended the first half with. I think Coach was a little shook by the Vuvuzelas down there. They had the student section right behind him or giving, giving her an earful. If she wasn't shook, I know I was. <laughs> Tough. Part of the rivalry game, the students getting in the mix. They got the drums, they got the Vuvuzelas. They're bringing it. Hecklers. Hecklers. Trying to play their part, Gooch. Get in the mix. There's no room in this game for Heckler. <laughs> Lauren Chang looking long for Alexa Bard. Nice header. Good combination right now from South Carolina. Oh, 
Ball driven up by Antono. <clears throat> Kenzie Smith, battling uh -huh. Alexa Ball. You see that Clemson's been having a lot of success with, with Morris and Jones on the wings, and you just saw right now Antono trying to find trying to find uh, Morris on the on the far left, but you know, I think they're gonna try to execute that game plan and, and, and pressure South Carolina on the flanks. See if they do it. Kenzie Smith wins the header. Nice job. Early ball played in. Floated to the back, though. Ball offside, though. Eddie Radwanski told us earlier in the week, Mackenzie Smith, three and white, just is a senior, fifth-year senior. She does all the dirty work for him. Fights, battles in the midfield. You've seen her doing that a number of times, scrapping, winning headers. He always talks about the grit on this team, and they, they displayed that in the first half. Yeah, in college soccer, you need a senior. You need a leader that's going to, especially on this young Clemson team, that's going to show the, by example, it's going to lead them. And, you know, she's been doing that all season, as Coach was saying. Grace Fisk over to her countrywoman, Anna Patton. So many English internationals on the field at one time. There are quite, quite a few here. We've got three outstanding ones as Lauren Chang loses Jones, but Jones battles back. Picking up a foul, though. This is the first ranked opponent Clemson has played this year. Are you at all surprised when they took the step up in class that they played this well? I mean, like I said, you know, rankings or no rankings, this is a rivalry. Yep, yep, yep. You know, everything is at stake for the, for the next 365 days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... I know this means something to the fans, this means something to the coaches, and, and hopefully this means something to the players. It absolutely does. You can tell the way they're playing as Harris puts the ball in, and Barb, loose touch. This could be an opportunity. Early ball played. Jones looked like she might be able to get there. Morris, excuse me, but just too much on at the right angle as Eskew gets back there and controls it. Yeah, she pulled the trigger a little too early. Morris wasn't ready for that ball just yet. She, I think she had a couple more feet to, to dribble a little bit. Nice interception. Could be one in a dangerous area. Caroline Conti on at the freshman. The ride from a long distance. I don't know if you're going to beat a keeper of Krasowski's credentials with that, but... I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I, I wanted to see Conti on the ball a little bit, and obviously she's probably frustrated with her first half, mm -hmm. and she probably wants to, to make a bigger impact on the second half. And you see, we're showing you the shot from behind Krasowski's goal. Her hands are over her face right now trying to block out the sun. So that may be a veteran thing. If you play at this field, you know when the sun is setting. It has got to be tough to see, as you just saw what the camera was seeing. Yeah, that's that's something that she's going to have to deal with in the second half, obviously. Um, Morris Clemson. coming down with a potentially an opportunity. Obviously, she's going to have to deal with that in the second half. Clemson had to deal with it in the first half. Maybe that was strategic to to switch halves and on, on what side of the field, but you know that's a that's part of the game and. Any good goalkeeper, any good player knows how to play through that. She is a veteran. Take a look. She's able to control it and bat it down. Outstanding keeper. Senior. Again, league. The history of South Carolina and goals and goals against average and shutouts. But dealing with the uh, the element that heats our solar system might be a little added, added difficulty. She seems to be doing okay thus far. She, she'll be all right. But her hands are up there. We'll, we'll keep watching. Maybe they play balls in toward her. Her, give her a visor, maybe, I don't know. Gold school, yeah, sunglasses. Can you play with sunglasses? The visor's acceptable for keepers. Who was the player, the Dutch player that used to play with Oh, uh, Edgar Davids. Davids. But that was, he had a, he had a vision protection right. thing going Exactly. You want some rec specs? You go old school? <sighs> Kareem? I don't think I ever played with rec specs. I, I don't think I would have let myself. Don't lie, I know you did. And <laughs> yeah, knee pads, too. <laughs> Bit of miscommunication, but McEver gets rid of it. Again, South Carolina, sixth in the nation in goals against average. Defense is what they're built on, their foundation. Offensively, they can struggle a little bit. And we've seen we've seen that a bit here today. Yeah, you know how they say offense wins games, defense wins championships. And mm -hmm. you know, obviously South Carolina coming into the, today's game is ranked number seven. Clemson Obviously, you're going to try and get them off of that seventh ranking with a victory today. Mm -hmm. It's a good ball down the flank. Good nice hold-up play. play. Battle in the 
midfield. Kyle Hirschfeld just went right through Lauren Chang. Those are the kind of duels I want to see on a rivalry game. <laughs> just laying it out there. Nothing dirty, but just letting you know I'm here. Cameron Dixon, but Renee Guillaume handled it quite calmly. Patton and Bruns collide. Ball stays in play. Patton's slow to get up. Communication from South Carolina there, but you see the urgency. They want to push forward. They were, in, they were, they're trying to get on the score sheet. You know, they don't like seeing that one-zero goal difference that they're not used to. Again, they are undefeated on the year. Six zero and zero. Dawson just batted around a bit. After the goal that Clemson scored, you see that the, they're a little more composed, they're a little more calm. There's no rush in their gameplay just yet. I want to see if that changes if South Carolina is able to get on the score sheet. Claire Griffiths picks up the second ball, trying to battle to maintain possession, picks up the foul, and she'll do just that. Wanski in his ninth year here. He's a good player in his own right. UNC Greensboro, two-time All-American at the Division III level, won two national championships, five caps to the U.S. men's national team back in 1985, coached his alma mater for 10 years, went to the tournament five of them, and then he's here at Clemson, building on what was already a very good program. It's a pretty good CV. It's pretty solid. <laughs> I'd take it. He knows his sport. Speaking to him earlier this week, by design, he has handpicked most of his players, offensive players, in certain levels and aspects that they've been lacking. Speed on the flanks, down the middle. And you see in Conti and in Morris the difference that they make in this team that they did not have last year. You've seen it now. Conti tries to get on the ball. Warren Bruns' pass was just tipped off by Eskew a bit. Still Conti tries to get the cross in. She will get a corner for her squad. Third corner of the match for the Tigers. Nate Guillaume slowly trots over to take it. Across this field from their left back spot. But again, you see that sun. See if there's an in-swinger played in. Krasowski's got to turn and look into that area. See if it can affect her at all. Keeper. Drives it toward the back post and out harmlessly for a goal kick. And the Just a for five, Luciana Zula. Quick reminder to everybody Hurricane Dorian obviously ravaged the Bahamas, really hit part of North Carolina quite hard, helped the affected people of Hurricane Dorian. Your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to www.redcross.org slash ESPN to donate now, or you can call the Red Cross, get involved, help those folks, especially in the Bahamas. 
and North Carolina that have been devastating at times. Long ball, Lauren Brun's gonna get on it. Flag is down. Dances past Patton almost. She's still on the ball. Runs back to Morris. She couldn't quite settle that first touch to get a shot off. And that opportunity right there. If she has a better first touch, she should be able to see a shot off. Ryan Garis and Morris battling. Well played and well read by Patton to cut it out. Potential quick transition for the Gamecocks. Alexa Barr in a foot race with Sydney Dawson. Dawson shields her nicely. That's what Clemson wants to do. They want to set the tempo of this game. They have the 1-0 lead right now. They're not in a rush. They don't want to make any silly defensive mistakes. If they can get a second goal to increase the lead, this game might be in the bag unless South Carolina has a response. Again, South Carolina not the most potent offensive team in the world. Loose boot there by Jaleesa Harris. Just clips Mackenzie Smith. Ball could fall. It does to Conti. But in the end, she couldn't really control it. Krasowski was out there to take control. This is ve very uncharacteristic of South Carolina. They're usually better organized. You see the miscommunication from the defender and the goalkeeper. She comes out. Fortunately, it falls to her hands. Guillaume showed too much of the ball there to Zulo, forcing a turnover. Zulo's now going to have it on the wing, potentially to cross. You got two runners in the box. Ball played in just over the head. It's loose. Garys tries to get on it. Lauren Chang was about to wind up, but a great play to tap it out by Hal Hirschfeld. The freshman there just in the nick of time. It's a great cross from South Carolina. Trying to put that pressure early on. To Clemson. They haven't had much success in the final third, the offensive final third rather, but you know, you see little glimpses of it right there. If it can fall just in the right place, they can get on the score sheet. Great opportunity there, but fantastically defended. Lauren Chang just boots it long, trying to play maybe a little route one here. Nice move. Gary's. Offside. You know, Coach Smith said before the game that their midfield is the key, and they love possession in the middle of the field while trying to stretch other teams wide on the flanks. They haven't been able to do that successfully today. and They haven't been able to, you know, transition that midfield to the front line and put pressure on the Clemson defense. And I think that's been the major key in this game as to why Clemson's up 1-0 right now. Well, the sub coming on here. Samantha Chang now comes in for Claire Griffith. Griffiths. Samantha a little more offensively minded than Claire. Box, she could make a difference here. Just crossed under about 30 minutes to go. Eskew on the ball, left back. Ball slips through, was touched by Mackenzie Smith, and yeah, that'll get out for a corner. A little bit of an unforced error there. Just under 30 minutes to go. Dallin Cuff here alongside Gucci Anawayu, former Clemson Tiger, former U.S. Men's National Teamer. 
seen a good one so far here. It's been all right. You know, set pieces might be the deciding factor in this game. I think as South Carolina wants to, wants to get back on the score sheet, they have to take advantage of these opportunities right here. You know, and they have the leadership. They have the seniors and the juniors and the upperclassmen to, to carry this team out of this 1-0 deficit. Samantha Chang plays it short. Back to Chang, a little angle change. That's not the cross she's going to want, but Alexa Barr is able to put it down. Potential three-on-three -three opportunity here. Zowski was off her line by a mile. Might have been able to chip her before, but now they're, she's retreated and just walked offside. That is, if you're Eddie Rudwanski, you've got to be pretty upset about that. I mean, that's an opportunity for a counterattack, and you can't make silly mistakes by being offside at the wrong time. Warren Bruns just wasn't alert, wasn't looking down the line, just wandered offside. She was just trigger happy. She got a little excited, didn't time the run, and she was offside at the wrong time. Lyon Morris and Courtney Jones connecting. They've been great today. Morris, not sure how much she has in the tanks here. She could run, but that's not that's not top clip for her. But she's logged a lot of minutes in this game, the goal scorer. As Clemson now, on that note, will make a host of changes here. Yeah, Morris has been covering a lot of distance offensively, but as well defensively. And I know that this heat is hard to play in, and we're going to see how much of a factor that's going to make to these players as the game progresses. And Morris just came out. Lauren Bruns is out. Renee Guillaume is out, Kenzie Smith. And Speckmeyer is back in the game. She started the game a little slow. Let's see if she can find her rhythm, find her momentum, and find her offensive prowess and put some pressure on this South Carolina defense. 17 White, she is the leading goal scorer on this team. Led them last year as well, second team all ACC player. Kimber Haley was one of the players just came in this game. Jackson Moeller entered the game, 38. Physical down the side there. Tatum Malazzo, shoulder to shoulder, did play the ball out, so she seeds the corner. See Julie Mackin getting in there, trying to take her player on. Mackey was the final person of the quartet to come on the field. Ball played short. Driven in low. Jackson Moeller pops it up. Feet by asking you to keep possession, get it out of a little bit of trouble, get it reversed. Lazo tries a little one two with Zulo. Ball did stay in, although the Tigers wanted it to be called out of play. South Carolina is going to have to get more of their center midfielders involved in this game. They haven't touched the ball a lot. They're playing a lot of long balls. They're playing a lot of Hail Marys. And they're not controlling the tempo in their midfield. And they're, give, they're playing into Clemson's strength, which is their speed over the top. And I think if they want to try and create something offensively and put some danger in front of goal, they're going to have to involve their midfield a lot more. That sub was about their top line, though. Bianca Galassini comes back in this game. Started the game, didn't get many minutes. Alexa Barr made way for her. We'll see if they can do what you're talking about, Gooch, and get some more of their midfielders. Lauren Chang, Samantha Chang involved in this game. As you said, Lisa Harris, she's a set. We've hardly, she plays deeper, but we've said her name yeah. four times all game. Galassini started this game. You know, she came off early, but she did have a couple looks on goal when she was in. Let's see if she can put some pressure. She's fresh. You know, she had a lot of rest in the first half after she came off. But let's see if she can do some, some damage right now up top.
quick turnover there by the Gamecocks. Speckmeyer, who, as we mentioned, did not start the second half. She didn't. I was a little disappointed in her performance in the first half. You know, she she made efforts. She tried, but she wasn't as convincing as she was has been in prior games. And hopefully, toward, to close out this game, she can get some opportunities on goal. You know, like I said, she is the leading goal scorer. She has five games to her name this season, and maybe she can put a sixth one before the game's over. Outstanding player for the Venezuela U-20 national team as well out of Miami. Slide tackle in there, and we will say it's clean. Ball's turned over. Julie Mackin on the ball, riding a challenge. Megan Mullen, the official, says, nope, no foul, play on. Out to Garis. Good ball forward. Fortunately, she wearing the right shoes. Galassini lost, lost her footing. Those are the opportunities in possession you do not want to give away, especially when you're playing away. When you win the ball, you don't want to just lose it back and give it right back to the to the home field advantage team. And that's exactly what that was. It was a good break to get out of pressure, and then she just slipped right before receiving the ball. I know she hoped to rewind and take that one back. Speckmeyer mm -hmm. tried to knock it on to beyond running. Caroline Conti didn't quite work, but Tigers maintain possession. Patton reads it again really well and steps into the midfield with the ball. Chris with a good ball forward to, to penetrate lines. And right there, that's the difference in this game. They don't connect that pass that they need to move forward. Hirschfeld tried to switch the play. Ball played well too low. Big collision. Megan Mullen will blow the whistle on that. Zulo just laid out by Jackson Moeller. Zulo gets on it. Good ball by Fisk out of the back. She's one on three, but she earns a corner. They have to take advantage of their set pieces. They haven't been creating anything in the run of play, so set pieces might be the only opportunities that they have in this game to be dangerous in front of goal. You know, they have the players, and they have the, the ability to be dangerous in the air, and they just have to get good delivery and give your team a chance to get behind the ball. Fifth corner of the matchup as we cross or approach the 20-minute mark left in this game. Lauren Chang with the in swinger. Fisk tries to get a head on it, doesn't work out. And there's a foul called on Fisk for the contact made of the box. So at this point in time, you just crossed out a 20 minutes mark, 20 minute mark, Gucci on way, you Dallin Cuff here. At what point, if you're Shelly Smith, a South Carolina coach, do you potentially just change some tactics and start to really throw some numbers forward here down one nil? Not for another 10 minutes, obviously. I think as Unorthodox as South Carolina has been playing in terms of their characteristics, they have been getting opportunities, shockingly, in front of goal. You know, set pieces here and there. The ball might be able to fa fall in front of a player and they get that opportunity. But for the next 10 minutes, I, I think that they need to try to implement their game plan as much as possible, be, be conservative, be disciplined in the back line, not give anything else away so that you have an opportunity to get back on the score sheet and make it count. See if they get that opportunity. And now Clemson's on the ball with Hirschfeld looking for options. Got some more subs coming on. Claire Griffiths is now going to join the mix. Out goes Jaleesa Harris. As we mentioned, Harris not said her name much, plays more of a deeper line midfield role, but has not been all that involved in this game. She is an important factor to the South Carolina midfield, but she hasn't been very instrumental in this game thus far. You saw her when she came off, she was talking to Coach Smith. Maybe 
you know, about what she sees, some, some dangers, what she can change, what coach can make some changes in the final minutes of the game. But right now they, they haven't been successful in anything that they've been doing, really. White steps into some space. She had Malia Morris in front of me and Cordy Jones in front of her, but Sam Eskew was reading that the entire way. She was already on the run to pick that off. I think she made the bad decision. If she was trying to play her into space instead of playing to her feet. Uh, these players have been running for the last 70 plus minutes. You know, give them a rest, play to their feet, let them catch their breath and, and regroup. It's good quick math by you. I'm not sure I would have got there. <laughs> You're a mathematician. Yeah. Archimedes. Clemson education. There you go. Julie Mackin stepping into some space. Early ball tried to pop over the top. Right there you need more composure from your midfielder. I mean, you have time to, to pick your head up, collect the ball, and play it wide, and just not give it away so easily. Conti's a freshman, and he, Coach Radwanski said she plays with boys beyond her years. Not right there. And here's Gary's trying to cross it in. Red very well by Antio, and she clears it out. Jones on the run. She's been effective all game. He hasn't come out all game. Over to Conti now. We have a break. Conti skips past the defender. He's walking through the midfield right now. Finds Speckmeyer out wide. Speckmeyer driven cross, dangerous. Fisk is there. Dangerous cross front by Speckmeyer. You saw that in the first half early on. She had a nice dangerous cross to Mackin. Put it in front of the goal. You know, obviously that's a great delivery. That's all you want from your wide players is to give the strikers in the middle a chance to get behind the ball and put it away from the goalkeeper. That was a great ball by Speckmeyer. Great job by Fisk to defend that and be able to flick it out and not into any trouble. As we have a couple more changes. She's look at Speckmeyer, second team all league player. The goal scorer, Malia Morris, came back in the game for Courtney Jones. Caroline Conti makes way. Courtney Jones had a great game. Even though she didn't get a goal, she was instrumental in the offense. She put a lot of pressure and gave a lot of nightmares to the South Carolina back line. Morris on the ball. Goal score gives it another shot. Just north of the crossbar. She's feeling it. Morris takes her opportunities every time she has the ball. She looks at goal, she sees a little bit of space, she's gonna take that shot and it just sails over the crossbar. Great driven ball. Zowski again yelling at her defense, yelling at her back line. Yeah, rightfully so. You know, you do not want to give a player like that a good look in front of goal. That's exactly what they did in the first half and she punished them for it. Riley Tanner drew the foul there, one of the subs at the last break. She came on the field, as did Paige McCula. Lauren Chang to play this in. Loaded ball, McKeever's off her line. Punch, doesn't get a ton to it. Blows down quickly, and Morris will blast it up here by us. Right now, that's all you have to do. You don't have to play pretty. You don't have to win pretty. But three points is three points. You want to win this game at, by any means necessary. So you said a few times, but if you're just tuning in, this team, this Clemson team, I should say, has not beaten their rival South Carolina since 2015. number of seniors on this club have never tasted victory over their rival. Ball played in. McEver sizes it up and comes down with it. This scoreline holds, that would change just that. This scoreline has been enough the last two years for the Gamecocks to get wins 1-0. Yeah, you see McKeever taking that ball confidently out of the air, taking her time. Obviously, she knows her team's up, giving them a rest and before she clears it out. Last five minutes of this game, we've seen a lot of pressure, a lot of offensive threats from South Carolina playing on the other side of the field, which we haven't seen all game. 
may wonder if Clemson has run out of steam from their from their front runners. Pakula, one of the latest subs in the game. Fisk, she's played every minute, as has Anna Patton, her center back mate. Patton looking long to find Mikula. And she wanted to make her run down the wing. She came in, pinched in a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're, they're playing into Clemson's game plan right now. You know, all the balls have been over the top, trying to find the wingers, and they're not even taking a look in the middle of the park. You know, their midfielders sometimes are wide open, and the players don't even acknowledge them. Beckmeyer, a foot race with Fisk, and she was losing the foot race, and then she just pulled her jersey. I mean, we're playing UFC, right? I mean, nice. <laughs> Maybe a little frustration mounting up for Speckmeyer, and I'm sure not the best performance she'd want to yeah. put in. I mean, Her team is up, but she's been, you know, had some struggles today. You can't be the best all the time, and I'm sure when you're used to being such a prolific goal scorer and you can't seem to get any kind of looks in front of the goal, it's going to cause frustration. A little bit of contact there with Mackenzie Smith, and now they'll pick up a foul. South Carolina will play it quickly. Warren Chang to Samantha Chang, back to Patton. See, in these instances, South Carolina needs to go forward. They're playing all these long balls, which I understand, but... Tanner Riley just went and cleared out. Moeller. I'm surprised we haven't seen so many yellow cards in this game yet. We've seen no yellows. That's the 12th, nine, excuse me, the 10th foul on Clemson. Moeller's struggling a little bit here. She seemed to be hit pretty well. Reacted to that foul. Great work by Mackin on the far side to outwork Pakula, outrun her to get the turnover, but then she just quickly gives it back to South Carolina. Mackin's been a workhorse this uh, this whole game. You know, she's been a, a silent hero, doing a lot of the dirty work, a lot of the running. Okay, don't up. Don't As she's up. been doing thus far for the Clemson team this season, she's been a very instrumental figure in this in this squad. Matt Morris, great job to skip across the defense and get an opportunity. Mackin right. floats it in. A little too much on it for Speckmeyer to get to, but again, Morris taking on some defenders creates an opportunity. Morris does not play like a freshman. <laughs> yeah. She's not scared to take players on. She plays like she has confidence and she has experience. She took the team on her shoulders by scoring that goal in the first half, and she's continuing to do that throughout the game. Alexa Barr comes in the game for Shelly Smith's squad. Senior from Honduras. Four game-winning goals last year. They could use one of those now. Not even game-winning, just game time would work. They could definitely use that right now. In the the final 10 minutes of this match, it's going to be tense. And there's Barr, a little shirt pull, and it doesn't matter. She was offside. Also joining the game again, Jaleesa Hara, 33, is back in. Morris on it. Speckmeyer overlapping. She plays her wide. Low driven ball. It's going to arrive to. Oh! No, to Kimber and just, just piked it. Those opportunities, Kimber Haley, she would have loved to take that back. She finds herself in the right position and just, just gets under the ball. It's a good cross from Speckmeyer and just sails it over for three points. Yeah, you don't want three. You could take one in this game. It'll work out take nicely. One. I don't want three. No. Griffiths looking for Mikula. Kula, excuse me. Great run again. This Tigers team clearly wants it. It's Mackin. Find a way to clear that out and get her team back in set, get those lines organized. It's like I said earlier, Mackin does a lot of the gritty, dirty work, a lot of the tracking back, a lot of the running. And I'm sure she doesn't get recognized for it all the time, but you just saw right there the defensive play from her. Goes out to touch. Under nine minutes to go here from historic Riggs Field. 
Clemson trying to get the win over their rival, a point in the Palmetto Cup, which is the season-long tracking of wins and losses between these two schools and their sporting events. Claire Griffiths, early ball played in. Bounces around. Could be a handball, and yes, it was in the end. As Mackenzie Smith was trying to clear it out. Those are the opportunities that you've got to be aware of coming to the closing minutes of any game. Any ball that drops in the box, just a, a half chance, half opportunity, that could be the difference between 1-0 and 1-1. Giever looking for Morris. Headed out by Eskew. Well, a couple more subs here. Courtney Jones comes back in for Clemson. She's been great all game. And Caroline Conti will place Kimber Haley, who had that goal-scoring opportunity just minutes ago. Mackin will come out for Jones. I know you've been, you've been praising Mackin, and rightfully so. She's turning great minutes. Yeah, she, she put in her, her work for the day. She's had a great impact offensively, defensively, covered a lot of ground, had a good game. Obviously didn't get on the score sheet, but had a good game nonetheless. Calm distribution by the goalkeeper. Gets herself out of pressure. Good read. Causing the turnover. And comfortable just playing it long here. Antio again in the right spot. All settled nicely by Riley. Samantha Chang's heads up, looking long. It's not a bad ball. Alexa Barr, though, just beat the last defender before it was played. She was off sides, though. But those are the kind of looks that you need right now in the final minutes of a game. You know, you got to push forward. You got to put it over the top. You got to try your luck. Something weren't working for the first 85 minutes, but now you have to, you have to do some desperation plays. Are you ready to see a little Route 1 football? May put Grace, Grace Fisk or Anna Patton up top and let them just... I know you know what that's about. Center back, go up top and win some balls. You're down 1-0, center backs go forward <laughs> and just lump the ball forward and hope for the best. We may be seeing that shortly. It's effective sometimes. Jones is on it, looking to get the corner of Eskew. Doesn't get there, but the ball stays in. It does. Wazowski smothers it, though. Looking to get a quick restart. Got Hirschfeld to her left if she wants to use her. Doesn't. Goes one on one, one on two. She's just going to take it all by herself today. Yeah. I think Hirschfeld just said, hey, you, yo, I'm standing here. I can play too. I can help you. Another substitution here. 23 red. Tatum Azulo. Malazzo, excuse me, just comes in the game. Making a re entry appearance in the second half. Ball falls for Hirschfeld. Early ball looking for Speckmeyer. Speckmeyer goes down in a heap. There's no call. Sidney Dawson just lump along. We're under five to play. The Tiger to my right is now standing up, leaning forward. Game. Former Tiger. Game gets intense in the final four minutes of the game. It is intense. Yeah. One nothing situation here. Two rivals, a lot on the line. Braggy Rice for the next year. Jones looking to combine, and she does. One two with Courtney, with Conti. Cut back opportunity. Speckmeyer. You would not have wanted that ball to fall to anybody else besides Speckmeyer, and she did not do her best with that opportunity. Courtney Jones d diced her defender on the right flank. Goes down the line, cuts it back top of the box. Speckmeyer. That's a clinical finish from her any other day, but today just has not been her day. Beautiful combination. Play a little one-two to get Jones down the line. Here's Speckmeyer on it again. Can they get their insurance goal, or does she go to the corner? 
It remains Tiger's ball. You might see a lot of killing time right now. Players taking their time on, on restarts, on throw-ins. Savvy, Keep crafty. Ball in the corner right yep. now. Oh, get a great turn by Speckmeyer. Dices a couple defenders looking for the third one. Can't do that, but that leads to a turnover and Zowski's out. Let's see if Fisk break doesn't break stride. 18 red continues to go forward. Oh, she stops. They're not going quite center backs up route one yet, it seems. May not at all. Right now they have nothing to lose. You're down a goal at your rival less than three minutes to go. Quick substitution. Francis Ann Matisse is on. A victory today for, for the Tigers would give them an incredible confidence going into the rest of the season, knowing that they're being a, a highly ranked team in South Carolina, a well-organized squad. You know, a victory today could be the turning point for their season. Yeah, unbeaten right now, only been drawn once. Come back to that in a second as Tanner Riley's trying to draw this game. Does not. She's taken off her foot. Well defended. Speckmeyer sees she can hold it up. Maybe draw a foul. She does. Well done. To your point, they're about to start ACC play, Speckmeyer and her Tigers. You want to step in with some momentum. Notre Dame comes up next on the 20th. Then they play Florida State, the defending champs on the 26th. Virginia Tech, another top 20 team on the 29th. That's just life in the ACC. But you get you get some momentum as you go into them. Yeah, this is their first ranked team that they're playing, their first real test of the season, and right now they're coming off on top. If they can finish this game off in the way that they they've been playing thus far, you know they have a lot of a lot more difficult games coming up, and players like Speckmeyer need to make better performances than she's done today. Jones binds with Speckmeyer nicely. Speckmeyer's in space, running, still running. She's got to hold it up now. She's off sides. As Jones then Jones just backs it out. Oh. Gotcha was going to just skip right by Matisse. And that'll go out for the goal kick as we are now at the one minute mark. Brzezowski looking for a quick restart. Center backs are now finally trotting forward. Kula. If I was South Carolina, I would throw everything and the kitchen sink. Sell out. Get up there. They still have how many? Dip? One, two, three, four, five, six players back. You have almost 30 seconds left in the game. Just put it all forward. Played out in the touch by Hirschfeld. We're under 30 seconds now. You can't win the game with your goalkeeper. Patton lumps it long. There's only one person up there. It's Chang. She can't make a play on it. Clemson playing volleyball right now, back and forth. And that's fine for them. Smart play by Conti. Hits it deep. And their hometown crowd's letting them feel it. The freshman Morris was the difference maker. 1-0 is your final. And the freshman, an individual piece, piece of brilliance, gives them the 1-0 win. Clemson has regained dominance in this South Carolina rivalry that they have not had since 2015. This has been a great victory for the coach, for the team, and for Malaya Morris, the freshman. Morris was outstanding. Eddie Radwanski told us she's got that unique, special something to create for herself and her teammates. She did just that. Individual goal created gives him the win, gives the team the win. They had not had it in three years. The seniors can now breathe easy because they are going to celebrate this win, which they have not felt in their careers against their rivals yet. We'll be back here to wrap it up from Clemson in just a minute. one nothing Tigers with the W. one nothing is the final, and this is a difference. Malia Morris, the freshman in the first half with a beautiful goal, and now we are joined by the freshman that got the game winner. She celebrated with teammates there, celebrated after the game. The first time she's been able to take part in this rivalry. Congratulations. What does it feel like to be the difference maker in this game, in a game where your teammates have not won since 2015? It feels awesome. That was our biggest motivation going into today, was our seniors aren't going to go out with losing to one team four years in a row. Um, I'm happy I could contribute to helping my team. That was our goal this week. Like, let's go out and play how Clemson plays, and that's what we did, and we got the win. 
Malia, congratulations on the goal. Love to see you get on the score sheet. Obviously, I'm a Maryland native myself, so <laughs> proud of you. Thank walk, you. Walk us through your goal when you were when you were taking on the player before you hit the ball. Yeah, I mean, my coaches just they t they trust me, and I know they trust me. So I just got down there, and I was like, I'm gonna take her on and see what happens, and that's what I did. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Did, did you guys have a lot of nerves going into the South Carolina rivalry game today? Yeah, we definitely did. We know it's just such a big game. I mean, a team that's beat you three years in a row. There's a little bit of beef, but I mean, we just focused on us, and I think that's why we got the win today. What do you think the difference was today besides your goal in terms of your game plans and your approach to the game that, that made the difference today? Um, I really think our effort. We knew that no matter what, if we went down or if we went up, we came in and we were going to finish the game off. Um, at halftime, our biggest thing was, guys, we still have another 45 minutes. Go into it like it's 0-0, zero, zero, and that's what we did. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Go enjoy with your teammates. We've, <laughs> we've taken too much of your time. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, here's what's coming up next. When you look forward, ACC play starts next. I mean, Gooch, give me your thoughts on this performance and this team. I mean, is this a team that can contend in this ACC? It, it is a brutal conference. It is a brutal conference. This team has a lot of young players. They have a, a big youth influx into the team. But as you can see, they took on this experienced South Carolina team just as well as any other team did, you know, and they, they took them on with, with a lot of vigor. And the game-winning goal by Malaya Morris, the freshman. I think this team can be contenders in this conference this year. And we will find out in due time. They've got a bunch of ranked opponents coming up, but they just beat one today. South Carolina number seven falls to number 20. Clemson, they'll be climbing up those rankings because Malia Morris, the freshman, gave him the goal for Gucciana Weyu. I'm Dallin Cuff, our entire crew. So long from Clemson, 1-0, Tigers.